Well, before I jump into things, I'm going to first start out by saying thank you all for being here and giving me this opportunity. I'm actually going to tell you why I'm thanking you when I get to the ask. So, uh, anyway, I'm John. I'm with Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix is a business we're actually taking on a very big challenge, one that a lot of people think is insurmountable, but we're doing it in a very simple and measured way. We're going to try and correct all the problems in the electric vehicle industry and the obstacles that are facing uh, adoption and the high cost of maintenance for vehicles once they're past warranty. So the way we're, we're looking at this is we're actually looking at what happens to the vehicle when the manufacturer no longer cares about the customer and the vehicle. Warranties expire. The reality is everyone owns a car, cars get old, and when they get old you have to maintain them, keep them on the road. Right now manufacturers are abandoning cars and the net result of this is Cars are going to go the way of cell phones. When it's done with its useful life, people are going to throw it away. That doesn't do anything good for EV, the planet, or any other thing that people want to measure EV in the market for. So what we're doing with this is actually we're going to target the deepest pain in this market, which right now is the original early adopter people who bought the earliest cars. The Nissan Leaf 2011 is now past warranty. There's more than 40,000 people on the road right now in the U.S. alone where their, manu where their manufacturer warranty has expired and they're now facing a price of battery replacement that is the same cost as blue book value on their car. What that does to their car is essentially makes it worth nothing. And we're coming into them and solving their problem by eliminating the high cost, taking a hardware component, pairing it with a software and analytics component, and we're going to install batteries as a service in their vehicle. They subscribe to our components, pay a monthly fee, and what we do is we watch their batteries, guarantee their batteries. If they start to age, we will let them know schedule a service, replace the easiest service modules in their car, and they're back on the road with 100% in their battery. Many of our customers right now have 30 to 20 to 30 miles left on their car. That's not a car, that's a bicycle. So the reason why I'm here today, my ask is, I relocated from the Seattle area because we're looking for a manufacturing environment to start up R&D and production. We think Charlotte is it. And we're here looking for three and a half million dollars to get to market with our early customers. And my ask to all of you is, I'm looking to meet some people because I'm new to the area. So thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Okay. Welcome to Charlotte. I think you'll like it. Thank you. I like it so far. I've been here almost a year. So. Good. Um, so batteries is a service. Yes, interesting. So can you talk about the logistics of that? Because these 40,000 Nissan Leafs are probably everywhere. Yes, right? they are. Yes, and they like, are. I mean, this is a physical act that we have to do to replace these batteries. That's correct. Like, we're not shipping these, right? How, like, how does this, how does okay. the transaction take place? Like, if I'm in Omaha, sure. and you're here, This is actually, I get this question asked me by customers all the time. They right. call our phone number, and I'm usually the one picking up and answering this. Yeah. So what we're looking for this is actually to enable a franchise-type service, mm -hmm. partner with existing automotive service suppliers right. that stand to lose business as EVs adopt and uh, take over more of the market. So we're going to approach them, provide them a, a brand opportunity, and allow them to be not only the, the installation partner, but the service partner and face of the business for our customers. There'll be a lot of coaching, a lot of teaching, and we're taking customer recommendations for businesses that they have had long service relationships with. The, the customer recommendations are the top of our list of people to call. Got it. So I've got an old Nissan Leaf in Omaha, and you're okay. here, and like Joe's Garage becomes your partner, and I've done business with Joe for years. So you're, you're going to ship him a battery? What we're going to be doing is shipping, uh, basically freight shipping to Joe uh, th for the installation process. And then Joe will be the interface for the customer. Right. Uh, our goal is to keep the installation partners within 30 miles of our customers because of the range limitations. Sure. So it might not be right next door, but close enough they can get there. How heavy is one of these batteries? The stock battery on the Leaf is uh, 60, 660 pounds, I believe, for right. the stock battery on the Leaf. Uh, right. That's one of the reasons why most people don't service their cars. It's very difficult to remove and why we need a service partner. Yeah. Um, our, component, our solution actually is a modular solution. We install a framework and then the module will install into it separately. So it's a much lighter, easier to maintain solution. So if I want to go do this yes. and I've got this Nissan Leaf, how much money is it going to cost me to like, because like shipping the, shipping the 660 pound right. thing, like that seems like a lot of money. Absolutely. And we haven't even Absolutely. paid for the thing and I haven't so, paid Joe to put it in. It's like how much, because like, I'm getting it close it's, to the it, cost of buying a new car, right? It, it's absolutely, you're right. It's very yeah. much expensive. What we're telling our customers for our launch uh, is we're going to be charging $1,500 for the installation component of the service. Um, it's a much lower bar than the $8,500 they're facing for junking their car and trading it in and getting it to a new payment. 
once they're into the service, we're targeting a dollar per kilo or three dollars per kilowatt hour for their vehicle. So on a Nissan Leaf with a 30 kilowatt hour battery, that'll be about a 90 to 95 dollar per month payment. So, okay, so you're going to be underwater from a cash standpoint initially on each customer acquisition and then sort earn it back as they kind of go. So, so you're going to need a ton of capital yes. to go do this. So one component of this is because of the service, we actually maintain ownership of the battery modules themselves. That is our asset when they come yeah. out of service. We will right. recycle them. We're tracking data on them and going to be putting them into second market service for grid storage and uh, suppliers of that kind. Right, and you don't, you don't have a product right now. Is that Sorry, what's that? Do you have a product right now? Uh, we've got what you would call benchtop uh, a product, and we're actually looking for our fundraise right now to uh, get to early customer installations. We've actually got about, about two dozen customers who want to target by the end of the year for install. Right, okay. I think that one of the things I would think about is like, um, getting the product done is obviously critical. Of course, you gotta get that of course. Done. Um, having the capital to go finance customer acquisition is gonna be like, Mega critical, and that's so, and we're talking I'd, I'd about. I'd love we're to talking about an ocean of cash. I'd love to address the customer acquisition piece. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Because of the desperation for the Nissan Leaf in the market right now, we have spent nothing on customer acquisitions. Uh, in the last two months, we have doubled our reservations from 200 to 230, and this is not showing the customers a product. We've got a lot of skeptics out there. Once we show them what we're doing, we expect a windfall of customers to follow that. We have tons of interest. Our subscriber list is over 1,500 people waiting to see more from us. We've got probably about 600 people on social media following us, and really we're waiting for, uh, that once we get some, some coverage on some of the, the media articles, that media coverage of what we're doing, uh, we expect we'll probably capture somewhere between five and 10% of the potential leaf market. Can I, can I ask something? Just still trying to understand the profitability of your business. Yes. Help me understand that. Not just the, the revenue, but okay. the profitability. So, so the, the hardware cost recovery alone uh, actually puts us a little over three years for us to recover the cost from a customer. We don't expect all customers to re retain that period of time, but we also have a car where the rest of the car does not age. So how much do you expect to make that? Uh, what is the revenue in that three-year period? Uh, that's our break-even point for the hardware install in the car. What is the, how much are they paying? Yeah, how much a month for the, oh, uh, the total? Oh, per month, uh, the average will be right around $100 per month per customer. Yeah. How much? Uh, about 100, 100 bucks per month. 100 bucks per month. Per bucks per month. month. Yeah. So we end up with a little over $1,000 per customer. $1,000, uh, so $3,000, 36000 plus the 1500 initial, right? Right, right. We're also so there's 5000 bucks. You're, yeah, yeah, but Joe's in there too. you got to pay the garage too. We're also that's recycling right. the hardware we're taking out of the leaf and putting it into other second market applications. There's a revenue gain there as well. So, so we're covering some costs in recycling. So what happens after three years? Uh, after three years for the customer? Or yeah, for you us? and for the customer. <laughs> Do they stick around? Do they, sorry, you, bring, you, 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 uh, it's, you it's, kept it's, the it's, customer it's, for yeah, three it's years? It's a continual subscription for them. Our target is to lower the monthly cost. They don't have to subscribe, time. right? They can they just have to drop have. it right there. Yes, yes. And if they drop you uh, after two years, you lost money on that customer. For that customer, yes. We expect there to be some level of uh, balancing between the long-term and the short-term customers for this. Uh, for example, if a customer wrecks a car, they will no longer be a customer if they're not, not in a car that we support afterwards. So we have to expect some value of customers dropping out before we get a subscription. Yeah. Um, so. So you have no competition on this? Right now, the only competition we have are people trying to do one-off, uh, single shop install, boutique effectively builds. And we're designing and building for scale with this. We, we attempt, we're planning to attempt not just the leaf, but any EV that passes market, or passes warranty market. So how, and so how much, so over, let's say a customer sticks with you for, till the absolute last moment that the battery can be used. It squeezes everything out of it. And, and, through and with you, mm -hmm. how much money can you make? What is the uh, the lifetime value of that one customer to you that sticks with you with a subscription? So with our subscription model, we're actually monitoring and maintaining the battery, and we'll be replacing the modules likely on an annual service basis to maintain that battery in top performance. In effect, they can stay with us indefinitely. So you're re okay, so that's different. <laughs> you're replacing these modules every year. Yes. Oh, I didn't understand that. Okay. The modules themselves are actually rebuildable. We're using a commodity cell. We're not competing in chemistry. How, how long can they last then that way? Can, you la can they last forever that way? Uh, effectively, by doing this process of uh, a, uh, an amortization and, and pulling out the batteries that are failing in smaller pieces rather than the entire pack, uh, we believe that we'll actually get somewhere around a 10-year effective lifetime out of the average modules. And the initial manufacturer's warranty is how long? 
Uh, most cars are between seven and ten, depending on the manufacturer. I believe the Leaf is, is uh, seven right now. So if you got years. seven or ten years and the original manufacturer plus the three years to break up thirteen years. Yeah. By then, do people still want to keep around those cars? So uh, forget the, the battery. Here's the amazing thing. Leaf, a Nissan Leaf with 100,000 miles on it has probably spent about $45 in maintenance besides the battery. The brakes don't wear out through regenerative braking. They, they have to refill the washer fluid and replace tires. So we actually expect that the customers pleased with our service that they can stay on the road for easily a decade, possibly two. So, John, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I think this is a Pretty cool idea, right? I mean, Thank you. Do we sure. like John's idea? Yeah. John's idea? <laughs> okay, it's very ambitious. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, the uh, raising money for something like this yes. is going to be really difficult. Absolutely. You probably already know that. Absolutely. Right? That's why I spent four years chasing the market analytics on this yeah. and learning our customer. We currently actually have, uh, we're entering due diligence for two and a half of that three and a half right now. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, like, I, then you probably already know what I'm about to say to you, but like, Almost every venture capital investor in the United States would pass on what you're talking about in the first, like, like yes. almost automatically, mainly because it's big science, it's long term. Absolutely. Like, you know, and so, like, I think when, when you're going out and doing your fundraising, you have to be incredibly aggressive about qualifying people as to whether or not they're willing to do deals that are yes. not initially capital efficient, right? Absolutely. Like, you probably talked to Lux, right? Josh Wolf and those guys. Like, uh, the people who do, yeah, you know, but like, like, but yeah. like there, there are some big science, long-term guys <laughs> yes. who are, because like, uh, like, like, as an example, Idea Fund has invested in, how many companies, 50 or something like that? But like, this would be a really hard one for you guys to bite off. Because of the, no, the, the capital needs in the term. Actually, capital need is not the problem, I don't think. Because sure. that's exactly what venture capital is for. Right, Companies right. raise tons of money right. if, they can, if you can prove that you have a profitable business. My questions are about two things. Okay. Your profitability, yes. I'm not sure that, uh, that my return on investment is good enough. I'm not convinced. Okay. And your differentiation. If yes. it is good enough, right? if you do have a profitable business, what makes you different than somebody else with the same idea? So wh why is it that somebody can copy the idea? So okay. uh, is your uniqueness, the, is the, the only thing that can differentiate you how much money you raise? Or is there something special about what you do? So that's, those two things I think to me are the things that you want to emphasize if you want to raise three million dollars, three and a half million dollars. Absolutely, absolutely. A big reason why I would say that we're the differentiator has to do with the team that we've got is actually, uh, Three, uh, pardon me, four co-founders and uh, a total of eight of us. And I've got three advisors from industry that have been in battery and supply chain on that side of the thing, of the house. Um, and we've been working on this for about four years. Um, at this point, on four years, we're debt free. We have earned all of our customers through uh, natural, um, organic growth, and we're working on this as lean as we possibly can because we're very much well aware of our capital capital challenge. So you have customers. I've, I've gotten a lot of no's, by yeah, the way. Yeah, no, 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 no. But you have customers now. We currently have 230 reservations for Leaf, and okay. we're in the process of inking a deal with an EV manufacturer so, in the fleet business that is actually tenfold that. So leaving aside the reservations, do you have yes. anybody that like has paid you money, like a customer that's paid you money and is paying you? Every money? single reservation has put in $150 deposit. Okay, but like, but there's nobody who's using the product now because it's just on the bench. No, no, okay. no one is currently right. using the product. We're Got trying it. to get there by December. Okay. We're, we're doing. What do you all want to say, John? Can you want to say, John? Yeah. Sure. I'm yep. just trying to think about the, like somebody could just, I mean, you, you're building the platform to have these like services and batteries. All somebody has to do is come in and like, just make a battery that fits in the platform. I mean, batteries are, are batteries, right? Actually, that's part of the long-term business plan. Um, just like these gentlemen could are talking you, could about. Could you repeat the question? I'm sure, okay. people so he, he's asking, so if we're making a modular battery and we're putting this in this car, what's going to stop someone else from making a battery that fits and plugging in? Mm -hmm. um, Part of our business plan with like this is we know that these manufacturing costs are absolutely insane, and if we actually do capture market attention, we're talking about costs probably in the 10 to $20 million over the next two years, if not more. So part of what we're doing in our R&D and development, we're spending a lot of time. Um, just quick background, I spent two decades working in network engineering and understand the power of standards and protocols. So we're building our entire system on the hardware and software side as a packageable, licensable system that we can go to battery manufacturers and tell them they can build for our service. So somebody can just put their batteries into your 
No, he wants them to. I want them to. Money. Want to. Welcome yeah. to a Duracell, Tesla, oh, and no, without your permission. <laughs> You're right. Um, without our permission, uh, the, the hardware likely wouldn't work because we do actually have a communications component between the battery and the car. Uh, we effectively have to. We have to translate what we're doing to effectively speaking Leaf or whatever platform we're going into. It's just, it's GoVD, it's just protocols, but we do have a component in between that can lock that up. But can they reverse engineer it and then just make it direct? They can reverse engineer the components of it, but the service piece of it, we're distributing that across the module, the communications component, and the cloud. So there's actually three separate pieces of the software that is managing that and controlling the system. Sure. Yeah, okay. With, so, so, sorry, sorry. I, can't, I can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> so with all the hardware costs, are you able to adapt that to more of a quick swap battery for a range extender if somebody pulls into the station? To, like Tesla tried to do that, pulling the battery off the bottom. So what you're talking about is, change, is replacing fast charging with battery swap. Uh, Tesla has tried that, like you said, and from a cost point, uh, it doesn't make any sense. There was a company out of Israel that took, I believe, 1.8 billion in financing, a better, better place, place mm -hmm. trying to do this. And they're, if you think my costs are insane, they're not <laughs> worth I ran the numbers on them, yeah. it cost them $800,000 per car on the street. Yeah, I know that company shut down. It was yeah. absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah. The, the reality is, you cannot beat the cost model of plugging into the wall. Um, so trying to do swap, in effect, to replace charging is a failing business model. Now that said, we are talking to some people in the race field because we think there's some opportunity to show off what we're doing in racing, but that's not really a business model, that's marketing. Um, one component you said was range extending. Now part of what we're doing is we're updating a car that is now nearly 10 years old. Uh, we can take a leaf with 24 kilowatt hours and effectively deliver it to the customer with near 40 kilowatt hours. And by doing our subscription service, as battery tech improves, their product can improve, similar to what goes on with software and Tesla. Uh, we've got a lot of customers interested in adding miles to their car, and frankly, they will pay a lot of money to get that because they love their car so much. How much of this can you actually add to the technology? You need to put that in, you need to extend it to other brands as well. So we're actually working on developing the uh, uh, the physical patent on the design for the battery because it is novel and unique. That's uh, one of the reasons why we haven't been showing our customers the, the physical design of the hardware yet, is we want to make sure that is in place before the world sees what we're doing. Um, there's some co components that related specifically to optimizing the service piece of it. Because of all of these costs, we want a service event to be less than an hour, in a perfect world, less than a half an hour to replace modules in a car. So there's some, some design patents there. Um, the data analytics component, component of it, uh, we're going to likely have some utility patents around the process, but there's a lot of off-the-shelf components that we're using for that. Uh, for example, a lot of the cloud stack is pretty much the same cloud stack anyone else is going to be developing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.